after that one and one up. Okay, hi. I'm just making sure that this works. Okay, hi. Um, my name is Joan Rockreed. I am a magic maker at Coast Carolina University's chapter of A Moment of Magic. Um, I'm also the character trainer for the 2021 exec board. And um, what I'm going to be doing with you guys today is we are going to be focusing on some stretches and some nice twists and pulls to detoxify our bodies and why that might be important in a time like this is we are constantly filling our bodies and our minds and our brains during unprecedented times with negativity and fear and anxiety and we're probably not eating the best right now which is understandable i've consumed way too much on this in the past two weeks and we are not in our best mindsets and we definitely aren't in our physical primes or our mental primes or anything like that so what i wanted to come on here and do today is i wanted to introduce you guys to some basic stretches. Um, a lot of them are going to be based in yoga, but um, I'm a beginner and I'm not teaching these to anybody as any sort of professional. Um, I, study, <clears throat> I study under a magnificent professor named Chris McIntyre at Coast Carolina University in the theater department. And what she does is she has a class for actors to take that help them align their spines, um, release their organs of any toxicity and um, emphasize their speaking voice, open their chest, expand their rib cages, um, things like that. And while people watching this, you may not be an actor, you may want to align your spine. You may want to release those negative juices and toxins from your organs. You may want to just feel better in general. And I think that this is a fabulous way to do so um, as a beginner to possibly some beginners. Now you don't need any super duper fancy equipment for the poses that we're going to be doing. What you do need is um, lots of open space. Um, you will need that. <laughs> if you have a yoga mat, feel free to go and grab it. Um, if you also have a yoga block, feel free to go and grab that as well. But if you don't, um, a rolled up towel or a rolled up dishcloth will work just as well. Just make sure it's nice and snug and use a rubber band to secure it. So. Um, yeah, so I'll give you guys a couple minutes to go grab those if you want. But that's basically what I'm going to be focusing on today. I really just want everyone watching this to kind of chill and have a good time and stretch. And it's a really good way to start your day. It's 12 o'clock. Um, some of us are probably just waking up <laughs> during times like this. If you don't have to go to scheduled classes, you're probably sleeping in a little later, which is fine. Our bodies need these times to reset, but it's also good to keep them moving and to get that blood flowing. So... That's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, if you guys have any questions during it, you can always comment, let me know. Um, I'm not going to be using any fancy terminology. Um, it's coming from a beginner, so you guys will get a very beginner's instructional pattern. So don't worry about not being able to follow along. So to get started, we're going to take our yoga blocks or our rolled up dish towels, and we are going to scoop back onto our mats, and you're going to set it down, and you're going to sit your tailbone on the block so that your tailbone is elevated and you're gonna sit in crisscross applesauce um, like this and you're gonna rest your hands down on your knees and you're just gonna center your breath. Um, you're probably not breathing correctly if your shoulders are rising. So when you're sitting like this, focus on breathing from your, um, your diaphragm and you're going to breathe deep and then you're gonna release it. And it's really important to do that because it helps you reconnect with your breath and that's a very important thing um, to do to ground yourself mentally and physically. 
Hi, Nat. <laughs> um, so we're going to start like that. We're just going to take a few good deep breaths in this position. Don't have to do anything complicated. Just kind of focus on your breathing. Focus on something you want to release and expel it out with that breath, whether that be stress about work, stress about classes, stress about being tired, stress about anything going on. Just now is the time to release it. And now sit it on your block. You're gonna take your right hand and you're gonna put it right behind your block like this. You're gonna seat it down. You're gonna stretch your left hand out to the side and you're gonna turn your head. And then you're gonna tilt it. Now you're gonna feel a really nice stretch right here along the side. It's all good, just breathe through it. Um, and make sure when you're doing any of these poses or you're doing any of these stretches, if it starts to hurt, we are really, really uncomfortable. Um, stop, listen to your body. That's something Chris always told us in class. Listen to your body, don't push yourself too hard. I'm particularly a little bit sore today, so I probably won't be going as hard as I normally would. Now you're gonna switch arms. This one was, this one was behind me before, yeah. So now your left hand's gonna go behind you. Your right arm's gonna go out to the side, and you're going to tilt and tilt. Now this one is really hurting for me today. <laughs> My neck is really, really sore. It's really tight. Um, definitely hurts a little bit, so I definitely need these stretches as well. Feel free to breathe in, breathe out, and then go a little bit deeper if you can handle it. And then we're going to come back up. And now still seated on our block, we're going to do some um, upper body arm stretches. These are some of my favorites. Like I do these every day without even thinking about it. Like these are amazing. They're phenomenal. They feel so good. And it's crazy what a difference your shoulders look like afterwards. So you're going to take your right arm and you're going to cross it over your body and use your left arm to secure it. You should feel a stretch through your um, shoulder area right here, a little bit behind by the blades. Now again, this one really hurts me today because I'm super sore on, on top. <sighs> Definitely a little tight. <laughs> Good, and now you're going to put your hand on your elbow. You're gonna push it up and then fold that arm back. So it's kind of folded like that. And then you're gonna push on the bottom of your bicep with your left hand. Try and touch your shoulder blade if you can. I know these seem super simple, but they're really, really important. And now you're gonna cross your right arm behind your back. See how my hand's right over here? You're gonna fold your left hand back and you're gonna grab onto it. And then you're gonna pull that left hand forward. It should, see how my shoulder dropped down? It should be dropping your shoulder down like that and stretching it. Good. Okay. Now you can already see a huge difference in the way that my shoulders are. This one is definitely more raised and not as relaxed as this shoulder is. How crazy is that? Um, stretching is really cool. <laughs> So this one's more elevated. This one is now relaxed and stretched out. It's a little more loose. Um, some of that lactic acid buildup has now flowed away from that muscle and has allowed it to sit naturally. So now we're gonna do that same treatment over to the left side. We're gonna cross it over like this. Feel free to wiggle your fingers a little bit. You'll probably see me do that a lot, like that. And don't forget to breathe. don't forget to breathe. Breathing is very important. No matter what, if you are struggling with the stretch, you have to focus on that breath. And now we're gonna fold it back behind our heads. We're gonna touch that shoulder blade.
Good, and now we're gonna cross the left arm behind. It's gonna grab onto our right arm and we're gonna pull that forward. And then we're gonna have nice, loose and relaxed shoulders, which is going to be so nice for us for the rest of the day. No tension, no more stress on our neck than there already is. Good. And now you can see both my shoulders are relaxed. They're in a neutral position. They're completely aligned. And now we're gonna do that treatment to the rest of our bodies. <laughs> so feel free to remove that yoga block out black, black, block out from beneath you. Sitting down should feel a little bit weird now. Regain your hands on your knees, hands to heart, whatever makes you more comfortable. Reconnecting with that breath. Keeping it nice deep in the in the abdomen, in the diaphragm. Releasing all those toxins out. Good. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do, we're going to continue with our upper body stretches, but we're going to bring some of our um, lower region into it. So you're going to scoot back on your mat a little bit. You're going to put your, your feet. You can't really see them. I can't fit that much on the screen, but you're going to put your feet like this so they're kind of bent. And now what you're going to do is you're going to, I'm going to, I'll describe it before I do it. You're going to lie flat on your back and put your arms out to either side. And what we're going to do is we're going to do our first twist. This is going to be the first detoxifying thing that we do. So um, you'll start getting a feel for them as they get a little more complicated, but they shouldn't get too hard because I, as a beginner who don't know, who don't really know what's up, um, can still do them. So cool. So you're going to put your feet at the edge of your mat. And you're going to lay back. Now we're going to do this on both sides. You're going to cross your left leg over your right leg first. And while you're laying back, and then you're going to take your, your right arm and you're going to pivot it, pivot it towards the floor to um, stretch that shoulder. So while you're back like this, keep your hands flat out. You're going to take that right arm and you're going to push it down. Now your left shoulder is going to want to come up. If you have a friend who can hold it down, feel free to have them hold it down. But the goal is to keep that palm of your hand um, flat on the ground and keep that shoulder down. You don't want it rising. And try to get that knee to touch the ground. I know lots of complicated things going on, but you're really stretching those organs out, really like wringing them out like a wet towel. Okay, good. And now we are going to switch to the other side. So we're going to cross the other leg over and we're going to lay back down and we are going to push that knee to the ground. Now this side is way harder for me. Um, if the stretch is too difficult, feel free to straighten your legs. You do not have to have them bent. And you can flip that palm up towards the sky. If that's easier for you. The whole point of this is listening to your body and what your body needs. And currently my body needs a lot of love. She's very sore. <laughs> so that was super simple, right? Super easy, beginner first twist, good job. Now we're gonna go into our first cycle. Now, if you've ever done yoga before, you know about the sun salutation cycle, or maybe you don't. So what that is, it's a series of four or five stretches that you do in a repeated pattern. Um, it's really good for the morning when you're just waking up and you're really trying to get your body loose, limb, and aligned. Um, it's really good for connecting your breath, and it's really good for beginners because none of the poses are super duper complicated. They all make sense in the order that they happen. Um, so we're going to do that. I just got to figure out where I can put y'all so you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, great. Can you, can you see me? Yes. Oh, I have to stand all the way back here. That's cool. What is this? What's going on? Okay, so um, normally you would do this at the front of your mat. I'm trying to get it ugh, back here. Okay, so you're gonna start at the front of your mat and now the poses that we're gonna be doing, I don't know the professional names for all of them, but um, we're gonna start with our feet in resting position, which means they're going to be naturally how they would stand if we were not programmed to stand the way we are. And how you can tell if your feet are the right distance apart is by putting your two fists together and putting them between your feet. If there's an equal distance amount of space, then 
you're standing right. And now you want to loosen those knees. You don't want them locked, but you don't want them super bent either. You kind of just want them limber. It might feel a little weird. It might feel a little unnatural, but it's okay. And you're going to rest your hands like this. Keep those shoulders relaxed. We just stretched them out. Don't want to tense them up again. Keep them nice and loose. Wiggle around a little bit if you need to. Bend those knees so you get that natural position, but not too bent. It's like a perfect little, kind of like this. I know, it looks awkward, right? So this is our first pose, right? Don't even have to do anything. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to breathe in. And on our inhale, we are going to stretch our arms up above our heads. Now I don't want you to just hold your arms up. I want you to elevate. I want you to act as if you're really trying to grab the ceiling. You really want to lift so that you're breathing in really deep and you're getting that nice stretch through the back of your spine, through your arms, through your shoulders. So we're gonna breathe in, we're gonna go up, and we're gonna exhale. And then on the inhale, we are going to lean slightly back. We're gonna now reach for maybe something a little bit behind us. So on that inhale, and then exhale, far back. Inhale, return. And now we're going to stretch again, but go a little bit deeper with that stretch. Carry it a little bit further back on that exhale. And then bring it back up. And now we're going to go into our first fold. We are going to do our forward fold, which is just going from up here. We're going to just fold forward and then kind of let our hands drop to our feet. Again, if you can't reach the floor, feel free to bend your knees. Do whatever is more comfortable for you. It's not going to be anything crazy. Again, listening to your body. These are beginner stretches. I learned them in a class, um, but they've really helped me. I've adopted them into my everyday routine. So again, make sure you're just listening to your body. So you're going to breathe in, and then you're going to fold down on that exhale, okay? Cool. Breathe in. Stretch, stretch, stretch up, and then we're going to fold down. Now we're gonna go into a half fold, or what some yoga instructors call monkey. <laughs> and that's when you're just gonna elevate your chest so it's a flat back and your hands are resting on your thighs. So you should kind of look like, like a little bent thing. <laughs> Upside down L, if you will. And this is gonna be monkey or half fold. And then we're gonna return down to a full forward. Now the next thing we're gonna do, we are going to step out into a yogi plank. Now, as opposed to a normal plank where your arms are bent, this is gonna be a plank where your arms are straight out. So you're gonna put your feet, your hands down, and you're either gonna, what yoga instructors call, walk or float to the back of your mat, which means you can either jump back into this position or you could walk back into it. Um, I haven't really stretched that much, so I'm gonna walk back into it. And you're gonna sit like this for a moment. Allow your muscles to shake a little bit. Allow them to be like, whoa, what's going on? Why am I, why am I working out? Why am I, why am I being used? And you want to be like, because muscles, you need to get used. You need to wake up a little bit. <laughs> and then you're going to lower yourself down onto your mat. You're going to put the, you're going to point your feet so that the tops of them are flat. And then you're going to put your elbows in and you're going to push up and look up towards the ceiling. Very deep stretches. Make sure you're breathing. Then you're gonna flip your toes so that now your feet are kind of ready to step back up. And now we're gonna go into what's downward facing dog, which is where you're just gonna put your feet on the mat, you're gonna put your butt up, and you're gonna push back. Now what you wanna do is you wanna pull your navel up towards your spine, which means try and really pull in that tummy Flatten those hands, try to flatten those heels if you can. With each breath and each exhale, you want to push further back on those heels. You want to crane your neck to look back at your feet. And now we are going to jump or float or walk to the front of our mats. And we're going to go to forward fold. And then we are going to go to half fold. And then we're going to go back down forward. 
And we're going to stretch our arms all the way up. And we're going to reach up, up, up towards that sky. And then we're going to put our hands together and bring hands to heart. And that is one full cycle of sun salutation. And what we usually do is we do that three times, which sounds like a lot. I know I'm already sweating a little bit. Um, <laughs> so it seems a little, you know, not too bad, right? Not too bad. So we're going to do that two more times. Um, I'll walk you through it the second time, and then the third time you can do it through your own pace. You don't need to follow my speed at all. Feel free to do it at whatever rate makes you more comfortable, whatever makes it easier for you. Cool. So we're going to get at the front of our mat. We're going to find that little sweet spot with that perfect spacing between our feet. Our arms relaxed, shoulders relaxed, spine elevated and aligned. We're just going to wiggle a little bit, find that center. And then when you're ready, deep breath in. Stretch up, exhale, stretch back, inhale up, exhale, relax, inhale, stretch up, exhale, stretch a little bit further back, try and look at that back wall if you can, inhale, back up, exhale, forward fold, inhale, monkey, Exhale, forward fold. Start feeling a little bit more limber now. Inhale. Exhale, yogi plank. And we're gonna hold that. Really feel it in your abdomen, feel it in your arms and your shoulders. Your whole body should be feeling this stretch. And now we're gonna come down and we are gonna press up. Look up towards the ceiling. Now we're going to curl those toes back onto the mat. We're going to push up in a downward facing dog. Remember, try to get those heels back. Tuck your navel up towards your spine. Look at your feet. Keep those palms flat. Now look up at your hands. We're going to jump or float to the front of your mat. Forward fold. You should really start feeling these stretches now. You should be a little bit more loose. Inhale, monkey. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, hands to heart. That's two. We've got one more. One more, and then we get to move on to some more ground-based ones. Okay, ready? One more time. Find that sweet spot. Ground yourself, perfect. Breathe in, stretch up towards the ceiling, stretch up, stretch up. Go the deepest you can with all of these stretches. It's our last time doing this cycle. Exhale, inhale, exhale, stretch back. Inhale, center. Inhale, exhale, forward fold. Try to get those palms flat on the ground if you can. Inhale, monkey. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale. Exhale, yogi plank. See your pro. It should get easier as you go. You'll get when you get the cycle in your bones, you've got it. All right, now exhale, come down. Inhale, press up. Look up towards the ceiling. Really deep breaths. You should feel those breaths in this position. You should really feel them. You should feel your stomach expanding. Curl those toes under, downward facing dog. So forward, forward fold. Come up, monkey, forward fold. Nice deep inhale as we come up and reach up for the sky for the last time. And then hands to heart. Whoa, anyone else sweat a little bit or is it just super hot in South Carolina? 
So that is the Sun Citation, a version of it. Um, that's the one my professor Chris McIntyre taught us. Again, lovely, lovely professor. I've learned so much from her and these stretches have really changed a lot of how I approach my daily life. You should feel a little sweaty, a little more limber. Your muscles should be awake. They should be like, whoa, we're aware, we're here, we're ready. So now we can go into some more deeper stretches. Feel free to stop whenever you are uncomfortable. Perfect, okay, so what we're gonna do is a position I really like called child's pose. Um, this is a really good full spine stretch. You've probably done it every day without even thinking about it. So you're gonna touch your toes and you're gonna spread your, your knees and then you're going to flat your back and you're gonna just come forward and stretch your arms out in front of you. Pull those arms forward. Feel it in your hips. And just kind of sit here for a second. Your hips are going to feel it. Let them feel it. Now, if you want to deepen that stretch a little bit more, feel free to take your yoga block or your towel, set it down where your elbows would be. You want to put your elbows up on that block. Keep your forehead on the ground. So make sure your forehead can still touch the ground, depending on where your block is. And then you can put your hands together and fold them behind your head like this. That's going to awaken the stretch in your upper back. I love that one in particular. I always need my upper back stretched out. Good. Now we're gonna do another twist. Yep, we're wringing those organs out. We got some stretches in, now we're gonna twist again. So we're gonna go into tabletop, which just means you're just on your hands and knees, like this. And then before we do our stretch, we're just gonna awaken our mid spine a little bit. We're gonna do some cat cows. Um, you're gonna look silly doing these, so don't even worry about it. <laughs> so basically cat and cow is an alternate between having your belly down towards the ground, kind of like a cat where it's bent downwards, and then like a cow where it comes up like that. So it's really pushing your navel down towards the mat and then up towards your spine. So we're gonna start neutral, find that middle, middle ground between them both. And on the inhale, we're gonna go into cow, and on the exhale, we're going to sink into cat. Simple enough? Got it. Okay. So inhale. Exhale. And your head should be going up towards the ceiling and down towards the mat with these poses. Cow inhale. Cat exhale. Out inhale. Cat exhale. We're gonna do one more. Cow inhale. Cat exhale. And now for the stretch, my hair looks crazy right now. We are going to take um, our arms and we are going to thread it through our bodies and then drop our shoulders to the mat. Sounds a little complicated, but you've got it. So remember, keep those hands flat. We're gonna start by threading the right arm through the, no, my right and left, the left arm through the right, and then dropping it down. Keep that left arm, that right arm planted, put it in a 90 degree angle. Stretch your left arm out as far as you can reach it. Remember, we're listening to our bodies. We're wringing everything out. Okay, then when you feel like you've stretched that out, come back up. Do a cat cow if you need to, recenter yourself. Now we're gonna thread the right through the left and do the same thing. Keep that palm flat, turn it up towards the ceiling.
Good. Now we're going to come back up. Feel free to stretch back in the child's pose if you need to. I always need to. I love this pose. I could sit in it for hours. Now we're going to take a few minutes to take a, a few minutes, but a few seconds. Take some deep breaths. I've watched a lot of videos on YouTube um, for my class. We have to watch them and we have to do these series of yoga positions and some of them really kick my butt. But then every once in a while, I'll get a instructor in these videos who is really focused on staying connected to the breath and staying connected to the purpose of why we're stretching. And our purpose today is solely up to you. For me, I'm trying to de-stress from all the craziness I'm dealing with with school. Um, I'm an essential worker at a grocery store, so I'm also dealing with that stress. And for this time, for this brief little moment of time where we're focusing on ourselves, we're just going to let it go. We're just going to let all of it go. <sighs> Breathe it out. Relax. Allow that heat that you're feeling through these stretches to kind of sit in your muscles. I get a little buzzy sometimes, like a little adrenaline doing yoga in the morning. The sun is shining today. We had some storms yesterday. And now we're going to come and we're going to sit. I'm going to do a few more twists. So you're going to sit like this. And we're basically going to do that same position that we did when we were lying on the floor earlier and twisting our legs. But now we're going to do it standing up. You can either keep your legs folded like this or you can straighten them out depending on what kind of stretch you're looking for. I always like to keep them up. I always go for a deeper stretch. And now we're going to kind of do what we did on the block. You're going to take your hand and you're going to seat it right behind your tailbone. Feel free to sit on it a little bit if you want. Or you can stretch it back. I like to stretch it back. And then you are going to cross your leg, your right leg. So if you've got your right arm back, cross your right leg. And then put the left elbow against the um, outside of your right knee. And then push down and twist back. Now for every exhale, you want to twist a little deeper. Remember you're twisting from your from your abdomen, not from your shoulders. It's a, it's a mix between pushing with this arm and pulling with this one. So you want to stretch back. On each exhale, bring that stretch a little bit deeper. Twist a little bit deeper. You're really wringing those organs out. Good. Now switch. Deep breath. Arm against the outside of your elbow. Other arm flat back. And then exhale, twist. Now your back might pop, might crack, because this is your spine aligning. This is getting all those juices out of the way. All those toxins are coming out. Good. Now let yourself loose a little bit. I'll we'll take a break from the body to let those relax a little bit. And now we're going to do some jaw exercises. Yeah. Yeah, I said it. Jaw exercises. I know. A little crazy. Um, I don't. I didn't understand them at first either, but trust me, when you feel them, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt a little bit. So what you want to do, you want to just start by <laughs> wiggling your jaw a little bit. Waking it up. And then what you're going to do, find where your jaw hinges. So drop it. Find where it hinges. And then locate right here. A few paces forward. It's that open area between your upper and lower jaw. 
And now what you're gonna wanna do, you're gonna take the heels of your hands and you're gonna set them. You're gonna drop your jaw and you're gonna massage down. Right here, it should hurt. Now you're gonna look silly doing this. I just looked really silly, but it's okay because you're not on live doing it. Nobody else is watching you. Right? No idea you could get sore there, huh? When I found that out in class, I was flabbergasted. I was like, what? You can get sore there? Yeah. Right here. You can get sore here. Where your contour goes, ladies. Or gents. Anybody wearing makeup, where your contour goes. Feel free to get that little massage. Good. I really needed that. I kind of zoned out doing that. It felt really nice. <laughs> so now we're going to do some more twists. I know. Very exciting. More twists. But trust me, after this, you're going to feel so good that you're going to want to start implementing this into your everyday routine, which I highly suggest that you do because it has changed my life doing yoga every day. It really has. So we're going to come back up. I know we got to sit for a bit. We got to be little lazy couch potatoes, but now we're going to stand back up. And now we're going to go into a warrior pose. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what a warrior pose is, your feet are going to be split like this. One is going to be turned towards the front and the other is going to stay in the back like that. And you're going to bend forward so that your knee hovers just above your foot. However, we're not going to sit in this position for long. Stretch your arms out like this. Reach for the camera. Reach for me. I'm reaching for you. <laughs> and now we're going to fold back. We're going to take this hand, grab the back of our thigh, and we're going to reach back. Just getting ready for these twists. And then we're going to come forward. And this one's going to go to the ground. And this one's going to reach up. Feel free to grab your ankle if you need to. Remember to keep that knee bent forward. And now we're going to go, we're going to straighten this front leg. No. Yeah. We're going to straighten this front leg. We're going to turn our foot. We're going to get out of warrior. And now we're going to stretch our arms out. Now we're going to do some basic toe touches like you would in cheerleading or dance. We're just going to twist forward and we're going to touch that foot. Keeping this arm straight, if you can, I really can't. I'm super sore today. We're gonna come back up, and then we're gonna stretch down again. We're gonna do that three more times. So, three more on each side. And we don't have to hold them as long. This is just awakening our alignment with our hips, our alignment with our backs, twisting. As many twists as we can get, so that was two. This is three. We got one more, we're gonna do four total. I'm gonna go down, come back up, and then down again. Good, now feel free to squat a little bit. Get those legs loose again if that tightened you up a bit. And now before we go to the other side, because we're gonna go to the other side, we are going to do a forward fold down. So stretch up, keeping those legs apart. Forward fold down, this one might be easier than the standard forward fold for you. Feel free to rock side to side with your hips. Pushing the weight on each other foot. And now you're going to reach for the other side of your mat. So see how my hands are above this side? 
Now I'm going to pull through and I'm going to reach for the other side. Good. That got me feeling a little stretched out, huh? <laughs> now pivot back into warrior two. And we're going to cycle correctly to the other warrior. So we're going to put our hands down so we're in runner's lunge. Push back into a yogi plank. Yep, we're bringing these back. Step forward. Pivot your foot, and now we're in the right position on the other side. How exciting. And now we're going to do those stretches again. I'm not going to count them out. Just try and do four, so four on each side. Well, first we're actually, I forgot, we're going to stretch back like this. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting too excited to do some twists. And then we're going to come forward, and we're going to grab that foot, keeping that lunge. And now we're going to straighten and pivot, and we're going to do those twist stretches again on this side. So arms out. That's one. You should feel really pro at this now. You should have these stretches down. Pat, this one's super simple. It's a good stretch for your legs, a good stretch for your upper body. Really helps you get connected to your breath. All right, last one. This is four. Stretch up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, exhale, reach for the other side of the mat. Feel free to stretch those knees, balancing the weight. Good, come up. We're going to go back into warrior. We're going to lunge forward. Now, again, I'm not the best at these poses. I definitely don't look like a professional yoga instructor doing them, but that's why it's great for a beginner to show a beginner how to do it. Good. Now we're going to pin wheel back into runner's lunge, back into yogi. And now, surprise, we're going to push back into downward facing dog. This is going to be, I think, the most difficult stretches that we do. I think this is as hard as it's going to get. So if you haven't struggled up until this point, you've got it on lock. What you're going to do is you're going to lift and point your right foot up, keeping your left one down. Then you're going to pull that right foot through to touch your left elbow. And then kick it back up. Pull it through to touch that right elbow. Pull it back up. One more time, pull it through to touch that left elbow. Pull it back up. And then touch that right elbow. And pull it back up. Set it down. Stretch back. That definitely got the blood flowing, didn't it? Point that left foot. Pull it through to touch the right elbow. Pull it up, pull it through to touch the left one, pull it up, pull it through to touch the right one, then pull it up, and now last time, pull it through to touch the left one, and pull it up, put back down, jump forward, forward fold, kind of hang here for a little bit. Put your arms dangle. Take some nice deep breaths. And
and now we are going to slowly rise back up. Try to imagine that you are stacking the vertebrae of your spine. So one vertebrae at a time, you're gonna come up. I used to learn that in high school from my drama professor, uh, Ruben Jackson. You're gonna come up like a little rag doll. Keep everything limp. Slowly, slowly, slowly stacking those vertebrae, keeping them aligned. You've worked very hard the past 40 minutes to align your spine. Don't wanna rush up and kill that alignment. Arms loose, head loose, chin on your sternum. Still stacking, you should visualize it like Lego pieces. Shoulders, and then finally your head. Some deep breaths here. We're back in our center. We're aligned, we're stretched, we sweat a little bit. Little shoulders. Notice your heartbeat. Take your pulse if you need to. Press your fingers to your throat. Feel your heart pumping. Feel it moving. Now, another thing you're going to notice your voice is going to be more open. The vibrations in your chest are going to be more vibrating. You're going to have more surface area to work with because you've been taking such nice deep breaths. You've wrung out those organs so they can hold more, more positive energy, more, more positivity, no toxins in the way. And now for the next 13 minutes, I just want to do a really simple meditation because now we've stretched, we've worked our muscles, they're tired. They're awake, but they need some more oxygen, and we want to make sure we get those deep breaths in and that we reconnect with our purpose for doing this. So, <laughs> you're going to take this block again, or your folded up dish towel. You're going to seat it down. Put it underneath your tailbone, like so. Find where you want to place your hands. Do you want them on your knees? Do you want to do these arm stretches while we're going through meditation? Do you want to keep them at your heart? Do you want to seat them behind you? How do you want your hands to sit in a way that will help you connect to your breath better? Totally up to you. You don't even need to sit on the block if you don't want to. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna neutralize a little bit, reconnect with our body, feel our hands on our knees, hands our palms together, wherever they are. We're gonna focus on what the palms are touching. Now I know there's a lot going on and I know that it's very easy to let it get the best of us, but it is really, really important that we take care of ourselves, that we take care of one another. That's something I'm, I, I've been talking to a lot of members of my chapter about is being kind to yourself so that you can be kind to others. Now it's really, really important that you are kind to yourself, that you stretch every day, that you drink lots of water, that to balance out the junk food, you eat something with a lot of nutritional value. It's really, really easy to stop taking care of yourself during really hard times. It's really easy to focus on how negative your life is, how negative things have become. But in those moments of negativity, it's really important that you seek out the things you love, the things you're passionate about. If you're stressed about work, if you're an essential worker, if you're on the front lines, or if you're in a grocery store or some other essential business, just know that we're all thinking of you. I too am an essential worker, and in times like this, it's hard to think that I could possibly take care of myself, but it's something you can do by implementing some stretches, drinking some water. In your downtime, when you're not doing school, or you're not working, pick up a new hobby. I know everybody's been saying that, but even if it's stretching every day, that's a new hobby. Maybe you want to start learning how to set the dinner table properly. That's something I'd like to learn how to do. 
Maybe you want to learn how to make the perfect cup of tea. So you make a cup of tea every night trying to perfect it. And remember to keep breathing while you're thinking of these things. Try not to focus on what you're anxiety about, anxiety, anxious about. We release that all in the beginning during that cycle of breaths. We release all that negativity. Now we're breathing in new positive ideas, thoughts, ways to take care of ourselves. Maybe you're going to Google how to make a personal hair mask. And you're going to start doing a hair mask once a week. Maybe you're going to start a garden. My family started a garden. Maybe you're going to finally open that board game you've never played before and Zoom some of your friends to play it with you. Take advantage of the connections social media allows us to maintain. If we were going through this in a day and age without social media or without phones or without ways to contact anybody, it would be very, very difficult to stay connected. But these technological platforms give us a lot of advanced tools to stay connected with our friends. I Zoom call with a lot of my friends. My grandmother downstairs, she'll house party with, with the family. There are, there are Google extensions, such as Netflix Party. Or you could play card games online. I know they have a website for Uno. They have a website for Cards Against Humanity. They have a whole bunch of online games. There's a Town of Salem game that you could play with your friends. There's a whole bunch of different ways to stay connected. It's very easily easy to feel isolated during a time like this. I know that I personally have succumbed to feeling isolated a lot. But sometimes stillness is really important. The world hasn't been still for a very long time. So we should embrace the stillness and the quiet. Try and get little bits of your assignments done at a time so you're not sitting drilling them all out at once like I'm doing. Find balance with everything that you do. If you don't want to exercise, try stretching. If you want to bake a cake and eat the whole thing, try and eat an apple as well. <laughs> if you're going to drink a lot, drink a lot of waters. You know, balance. If you're going to allow yourself to feel negative emotions, balance them out with positive ones. For every negative, find a positive. Yesterday it was raining and it was awful. And I had to work, and that was really, really negative and in a really upset mood. But I balanced the rain with just sitting and listening to it and trying to organize my planner. Two completely different things, but balanced nonetheless. So open your eyes. Really stretch out, stretch anything else out that you need to stretch. Reach up for the ceiling if you need to. Do some more child's pose. Really allow yourself to feel all the positivity that you just breathed in, all the good energy you just absorbed. Now again, I'm no professional. I'm coming to you as a college student who takes a class in school and studies this, but this is something my professor always pushes for us, is to stay connected to our breaths, stay connected to our purpose. The Moment of Magic Foundation has been absolutely incredible during this whole time. I'm so honored and blessed to work with such an incredible, strong group of individuals. I'm honored to be a member of Coastal Carolina University's chapter. Excited to serve on the exec board next semester. And 
And I cannot thank Moment of Magic enough for being such an incredible place of magic is the only way I can put it. Such a place of caring for everyone. Me and my chapter do some amazing bonding activities. Thanks to our inner chapter relations chair, Rebecca. Keep naming things that you're thankful for. What are you thankful for? Speak it out into existence. Speak that positivity out into the open. Open the door for positivity to be what's on your mind when I end this live. Walk away from this live with positive, with a positive attitude, with hope. Think of something you're gonna do today that you weren't originally planning to. During that meditation, I have decided that I'm going to go through my planner and I'm gonna go through the rest of my syllabi syllabi on my class pages and I'm going to organize and map out the rest of my semester. Think of something that you're going to do for something else. Whether it be someone in your house, somebody not in your house. Maybe you have an older neighbor on the street who really needs someone to go get groceries for them. Or maybe they really are even scared to go to their mailbox, bring their mail up to their door. Think of something you're going to do for yourself. Think of something you're going to do for somebody else. It's a really easy way stay positive, stay connected, to stay aware of your surroundings. I'm gonna take a few more deep, deep breaths before we end today. Now one more, breathe in the rest of that positivity. And then exhale any negative thought you have left. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I know this was kind of different. I really hope that those who followed along, I hope you really enjoyed it. For those who didn't, I hope when this live is posted, you can go back and watch it and revisit these stretches. If you really want to start making yoga and stretching a daily part of your everyday routine, um, I really think that that's something everybody should consider. Even if it's only 10 minutes of your day, it really is a great way to reconnect, to ground yourself, to find the good in everything going on. It's a really good way to, you know, stay one with yourself and the world. So thank you guys so much. Thank you to A Moment of Magic for letting me come on and do this live. Um, and yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I feel really stretched out. I'm ready to go to class now. I have class. <laughs> but um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much. <laughs>